If you don't know what boot.dev is, it is basically a gamified way to learn about backend coding and CS concepts. That makes the overall process just way more fun. There's a lot more progression and it's way more hands-on than what you'd be used to. I've been personally taking the SQL course, learning and refreshing my skills and databases, and it's been super useful for my own project. So it doesn't feel like you're idly just watching the videos, you actually can interact with the concepts and because there's an RPG element to it, it actually makes it a lot more fun. I feel like I'm not finding myself getting bored with anything. And if you get stuck, there's also a helper boots. <laughs> Doesn't just give you the answers, it helps you work through the problems and understand you and notice you forward. They also have training grounds, which gives you practice and you're able to grind the concepts until they actually stick in your head. So boot.dev is for people who actually want to become developers, people like builders, gamers, tech curious people, and anyone who really wants remote friendly skills. So if you're interested, go to boot.dev and use code JVSchultz to get 25% off your first year on the annual plan. Thank you again boot.dev for sponsoring this video and now back to NASA's so there are a few considerations that I had coming into this when I was building my NAS. Mainly, I wanted to store old YouTube footage. Uh, note that I'm not editing directly off the NAS, so I don't need super fast storage. Um, I'm backing up old photos, storing Japanese immersion media, storing books, audiobooks, databases for my projects and backups of those projects as well. So yeah, as a result, there were definitely a few hardware choices coming into this NAS. So there's going to be a few considerations coming into this. First off is how much storage and RAM we want. Because I'm storing a lot of stuff, I'm mainly going to be using hard drives for the bulk of the data. Hard drives just cannot be beat in terms of size for the price. So yeah, there's definitely a few considerations when you pick a hard drive. First off is uh, you're going to want something called a CMR drive. There's SMR and CMR. CMR is just a lot better for NASA's and this application. So you're going to want one of those. For me, like my NAS is like sitting right there. So I want something that's like filled with helium. So it's just quieter. A lot of the enterprise grade drives out there are filled with air and they'll just spin way louder. So I'd definitely research like how noisy you want your hard drives to be or if you're like storing it in like a closet or something, it might be a lot better. And yeah, my computer is actually using SSDs as well. As you know, they're not as price efficient, but they're a lot faster. So we can actually use SSDs as a cache for the hard drives. Hard drives don't really do random reads and writes very well, which SSDs excel at. So you can actually set up SSDs as a cache for your projects if you want to. And that's really something good to explore. Uh, for me personally, I'm also going to be using a VDEV. A VDEV is something that we set up and it stores metadata. Chances are, if you're just like trying to stream like movies off your NAS, you don't need an SSD cache or an SSD VDEV, you'll probably be fine with just hard drives or just like an SSD cache with hard drives. But yeah, because I'm using it in like an enterprise application where I'm deploying stuff that people are using, I want a VDEV as well. You also want to think about redundancy. Basically, there's this thing called RAID that allows you to add redundancy to your system. So say that one of the drives dies, um, we can use redundancy to back up the entire file system and make sure all the data is okay. Uh, so because of that, you'll lose capacity. So if you buy like two two terabyte hard drives, you'll end up only having like two terabytes of usable space. How fast you want the NAS is completely dependent on what you're trying to do with it. For me, uh, I'm mainly using it as purely a storage device. So I don't need something that's super fast. If I was running like a 10 gigabit system where I was trying to edit videos directly off of it, that has like a lot of read, random read and writes, I'd want a faster, 10 gigabit NIC, but for me, um, I'm just sticking to a one gig for right now. And in the future, we might upgrade, we might not. You can also get a 2.5 gig, which is a bit in the middle. Usually your processor isn't gonna be a major bottleneck. Most people nowadays, I would say, are getting like an N100, which is like a mobile tier CPU. And yeah, uh, you'll probably just mainly wanna be thinking about power efficiency or going overboard with the processor in this scenario. So depending on where you live, there'll be a lot of energy considerations. Here in LA, the price of energy is not super cheap, but if you're living in like Germany or something where the prices are really high, you really want to think about how much power the entire system is consuming. Uh, and this is a factor of the processor and the storage that you end up choosing. For me, I'm running a mobile class CPU and 
As a result, the overall wattage of the system shouldn't ever exceed maybe like 350 watts with, I'm running six hard drives and a bunch of SSDs. So because of that, I think 350 watts for my power supply should be sufficient. And I'm also running an 80 plus uh, silver power supply. It's like bronze, silver, platinum, gold, uh, titanium maybe. So depending on what you're trying to do with the system, there's also definitely a few software considerations. First off is like the file system that we're trying to use. Uh, for me, because I'm using it in more of like a deployment application, I really need high data integrity and like enterprise features, like backing up stuff. And yeah, because of that, I'm using this thing called ZFS, but there are also other file systems. There's ext 4 BTRFS, uh, XFS for Unraid. The operating system that uses ZFS is TrueNAS Community, um, but like in Debian, it'll use ext 4 um, and Unraid will be using XFS. Open Media Vault, uh, I don't know what it uses, but I'm pretty sure it's ext 4 But if you're trying to do something just like chiller, I'll definitely lean more towards like a chiller, less feature-rich file system. And also like the way that it'll implement redundancy is different. So ZFS uses ZRAID, which is like a bit smarter than just regular RAID. Uh, whereas this has like a lot more checksums and stuff like that. This one is not expandable. So yeah, because of that, I had to buy all my hard drives uh, up front which is kind of like an annoying thing. If you go with like a chiller file system, you can actually use this thing called MergeFS, which will allow you to use different hard drives of different capacities and of different file systems together. Uh, and that's definitely something that I think would be like the best for a normal like NAS at, that you're building at home with stuff that you have around. So yeah, I'll definitely look into that as well. So when we're building all this, you also want to think about 321 backups. Uh, if like there were ever a fire in my apartment, um, and everything was lost, I'll definitely have like a one offsite backup somewhere that stores my most important media and files. So all in all, I spent two racks uh, on the entire NAS. Hard drives were 220 M6, which is like uh, 1300 bucks. So definitely not like the cheapest thing, but uh, this actually eliminates a lot of like the pain points that I have in my life. But if you think about it, like moving forward, everything in my life will be centered around my NAS, like Japanese coding, all my like local media projects, uh, editing YouTube videos, my own projects, like everything that I'm gonna interact with moving forward will probably touch my NAS in the future. So for me, having like a good uh, NAS solution is definitely gonna be worth the investment, I think. I also wanted to note that this can be done like way cheaper if you just use a computer that you have laying around or maybe like a $50 Optiplex off of eBay. So yeah, there are definitely videos on YouTube explaining how to make this significantly cheaper. But for my applications, uh, building my own NAS here with this much storage uh, made the most sense. So this is where the SFX power supply would go. But interestingly enough, they give you these little metal brackets that you can use to install hard drives right here. And then you can install a flex power supply right here. Except one thing about this combination with this motherboard specifically, because there's like a copper block on top of the CPU, even when you use a very low profile CPU cooler, the Flex ATX power supply will still touch the top of the CPU cooler and cause the entire motherboard to bend like this, which is something that I am avoiding. So I'm just putting the Flex power supply right here in this op open spot. Because I'm running six 12 terabyte hard drives, that gives us 72 terabytes of raw space, but I'm running them in RAID Z2, which means that we get double parity. So if two of the drives die, we'll still be safe and have redundancy so we can restore all the data. And that'll give us 48 terabytes of storage. Now it's recommended for ARC that you run one gigabyte of RAM for each terabyte of free storage, which would mean that technically we should be using 48 gigabytes of RAM. I will be using, however, 32 gigabytes of RAM because that's just what I have and I don't anticipate it being a problem, but yeah. If I was running like Jellyfin with transcoding off of this NAS or like multiple VMs or a lot of Docker containers, it'd probably make more sense to have more RAM or like L2 ARC, but yeah, for my scenario here, I think 32 gigabytes should be sufficient. So I ordered this motherboard with an i5-1135G7, which is a mobile class CPU. 
because I'm using this in a situation where people will be accessing data off of this, I wanted to go a bit overkill on the processor. Technically, I think an N100 would be sufficient, but yeah, I went a bit over and beyond there. And yeah, because it's a mobile class CPU, we're actually using SODIMM here, and it only has a four pin CPU header. Imagine that these are matching one terabyte SSDs. These are my VDEV drives. If one fails, the other one should still have redundancy and I'll be able to restore the system. If one of the V drives went down, uh, it's like part of the overall partition, so it would make everything like unaccessible if one of them went down. So that's why I'm running two of them with redundancy. I also have a 128 SSD for my boot drive, and then I have this one terabyte drive. I'm gonna get another one that I'm gonna store my fast data that I need on it, like all my databases and stuff like that will live on these two and a half inch drives. What's interesting about this case is that you can actually like stick drives in the front like this, like they're old floppy drives, which is pretty cool. So I actually ordered six hard drives for this video and they really should have been here by now, but uh, this one made it. I bought two of these off of eBay, they were used. And then when they got here, it was mis labeled on the listing. So these are just normal WD red and not red plus ones like this, which is pretty cool. So I have to send these ones back. And then I ordered another one off eBay and then that one was shipped with FedEx and FedEx lost the package. So that one's not gonna make it here in time. And then I ordered two of them off of Amazon, but they're back ordered, so they're not gonna make it here in time. So just imagine that I have six of these. And then I went with the Red Plus because from what I've read online, they're technically the quietest drives at this capacity. We'll see how true that is. I've seen other people say that these drives are not very quiet. So I will let you guys know in the future about how loud these guys are. Also, for some reason, this motherboard comes with a four port NIC, but they're all two and a half gig. Um, the N100 variant of this motherboard comes with a 10 gig NIC. So I don't really know why they did it like that, but in the future, if I ever wanted to upgrade to 10 gig, I would just add a PCIe card for that. So I actually misspoke earlier. This is a 500 watt power supply. I definitely think that this is overkill. Like uh, even like 230 watts probably would have been enough. This is a 250 watt power supply, but yeah. Uh, I just wanted maybe like 350 watts for six hard drives and then this is like the cheapest one that I could find around that capacity. So the top hot swap HUD drive thing holds four drives. I'm able to squeeze in these SSDs right here and then we'll have two hard drives right here which gives us a total of two NVMe, two hard drives right here. Uh, we'll have an additional 2.5 giving us three 2.5 inch SSDs and then the top four hard drives. So a good amount of storage for how small this chassis is. So one good aspect of this case is that the 120 millimeter fan in the back actually sits and hits the back plane of this hard drive enclosure. So the hard drives will get a bit of cooling from this fan, which is really ideal. We want to keep these under like 50 Celsius. So I'm going to guess that some people in the comments are worried about the vibrations coming from both this fan and also from my gym right here. As far as the gym, I'm not concerned about vibrations. Everything I do is with these safety straps and it isolates literally everything. Um, with this rubber flooring as well, I'm really not concerned about the vibrations transferring from here to here. And then as far as this tower fan, I have attached a bunch of rubber feet underneath this to isolate it from the case as well. So I'm not personally worried about it, but I will let you know in the future if my hard drives all fail because of this fan. I only run this for like an hour a day at max, so I'm not super concerned about it. With this NAS, we're definitely getting closer to my goal of having a computer in every single corner of my apartment. We got one over there, one over there, one here, one here, like eight right here, uh, one right here, one right here, and then one